A behind the scenes look at Nebraska's new football facility and more coming up. You are locked on Nebraska, your daily Nebraska Corn Huskers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Good morning, happy Friday, and thanks for making Locked On Nebraska your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Good morning to those of you who are watching with us. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome in. I am Mitch Sherman. Connor Happer is with me. Big weekend is here for Nebraska football. All kinds of recruits on campus. The camp season is still going I want to ask this question, Connor, as we get started today and Nebraska welcomes in visitors. There's in-state visitors, out-of-state visitors. There's some four-star guys, some lower-rated prospects who were in town. One of the players that Nebraska is hosting this weekend is Christian Jones from Omaha West Side, the four-star linebacker who um, has been to Auburn, will be to Oklahoma. Obviously a giant target for Nebraska in this class of 2025. Another prospect is S.J. Alofaituli. He is a lineman from Las Vegas, Bishop Gorman. I hope I pronounced that correctly, the last name, not the school. Um, So which of these guys or which profile of player, when you talk about a guy like S.J. or Christian Jones, is most important for Nebraska in building momentum for this 25 class? By the way, you sounded confident enough, so I think that that pretty much, you know, that does it. That's the old radio trick. I researched it. I researched it on Thursday. I'm um, trying to find some some uh, pronunciations, and I failed at that, so I gave it my own phonetical spelling. You know what's funny? We do a lot with the 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 local recruiting thing, and how, especially early in a coach's tenure, if you get a player like Christian Jones, who you know is is one of the better ones out of the last two classes here, it kind of sets the tone and it sends the message to to everybody around in the area that hey you know nebraska is going to lock this down and kids from omaha or kids from lincoln are going to end up at nebraska and i think there's obviously a, a a kernel of truth to that and um that something has happened over the last couple of years where there is i think it's a combination of a couple of things one there's there's seven eight ten you know power five type of football players um, that come from the state of Nebraska pretty routinely now. Yeah. And you're not, yeah. I, I think, you know, it's we're on your like year four of this happening. Yeah. Right. You're, you're just not going to get all of them every time. Well, I think Jones is obviously a really, really important player in Nebraska would love to have him. They need help at linebacker, like all this stuff. Um, so there there's, there's that piece of it. You're just not going to get all of those guys. And then I think Nebraska has sort of positioned itself from a recruiting perspective to say, hey, you know, like no one recruit is um, is so important that it's going to tank us or that it's going to send some sort of a a message to everybody else or anything like that. Like, I don't I don't know. It's um, it's interesting how it's developed. And with that being said, I think both of these guys are super important for what Mm -hmm. they're going to do. Um, Alo Faituli is a guy who you know, sounds like he could play pretty early on the offensive line. So that's a, that's a positive and Jones, we just talked about him. So they're both important. I'm not trying to minimize that, but it, it does, it does feel like Nebraska has positioned itself where it's not tanked if they don't get one single player, which is a really positive place to be. Not tanked, but it would be very disappointing to miss out on Christian Jones. No doubt. I, I no will doubt. say, I think, and, and to answer my own question, I think Christian Jones is the single most important player who's left on the board for Nebraska in this class. And I know that there's some five-star guys out there that Nebraska hosted David Sanders, the old lineman from Charlotte. It seems like a year ago that he came into town. It was back, um, you know, during spring practice, but you know, Nebraska knew that was the case when they chose to bring him in early. And then he went on this tour that's ongoing now with like the biggest programs in the country or the, the the most successful programs in the country. And I know that Michael Terry from Texas is, is still out there um, as a guy who visited Nebraska, the five-star athlete. Um, Dawson Merritt is still out there. The linebacker from, from yep. uh, the Kansas side of the, of the Kansas city area who is down to, Alabama and Nebraska and and he or his dad the who's an assistant coach for the Chiefs they 
they're out there on social media every day reminding reminding Nebraska fans that um, it's down to Alabama and Nebraska. All mm-hmm. of that said, I don't think it gets more important for Nebraska in this cycle than Christian Jones because I don't think players like Christian Jones come along very often in um, recruiting around Nebraska. And that's probably a mouthful because there have been some very good players in recent years who've come out of Bellevue West and Omaha West Side and um, the Miller schools. And um, But I think Christian Jones is potentially that special of a, of a talent. And we maybe are underestimating him a little bit because Christian is not one of those guys at all who's out there promoting no. himself. He's very much about the West Side Warriors and winning a state championship to finish his career, another state championship. So um, as a result, like we don't tend to get as excited about him. And I think maybe we should. What do you think about the idea? Um, I mean, like, like I said at the beginning with all these players that are coming out of, out of the state and out of the area. Um, I, I used to say this all the time. Like, you know, the message was over the last, several classes like hey you can come in here um whether you're minnesota or iowa or whatever it might be local um you know 500 mile radius type of schools come in here and grab you know a a a high three-star four-star type prospect that nebraska really wanted and it's happened a few times now um it's not a great message to to obviously get out there but i guess how do you feel about the the position with which nebraska's placed itself from a just from a confidence perspective and what they're evaluating and the type of players that they bring into their program. Yeah. I mean, There's look, a lot the pro- yeah, look, the, the profile of the local kids has, has gone way up and Nebraska yeah. is, is, is fortunate that it has put itself in this position with the coaching change and the way that it has, it has, altered its emphasis i guess nebraska's nebraska has always been good at recruiting in state but it hasn't always been able to cover every base you know there there have been blind spots i suppose is the way to look at it at times through different coaching regimes in lincoln and there was there were blind spots in the frost regime and that nebraska struggled to lock down the city of omaha now if there was a kid from ainsworth or from pierce you know, and I just randomly picked those those two cities, um, <laughs> not because um, there were then, prospects out of there. No, 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 nothing to do with yeah. with that. Yeah. But um, if there was a kid from there, then I think the Frost coaching staff was good at um, at resonating with those players. But in Omaha, that wasn't That's the right. case, and it got to the point late in the Frost years where Nebraska was missing out on half um, or close to half of the top prospects in Omaha. You're still going to see it around the Omaha area. You know, um, in in Matt Rule's first year. Uh, he lost out on on Ben Bramer um, from Pierce, who now I think has a future in the NFL um, after he gets finished up at Iowa State, was a true freshman there last year. In this class, this 25 class that's being put together right now, um, they're missing out on, on Ryman Zebert, the tight end who just committed to Stanford within the past week. But both of these guys are tight ends, and I think it's different with tight ends in the state of Nebraska because for whatever reason, they just like tend to grow on trees, um, great <laughs> tight ends. Um, so you miss out on Zebert, and there's another one up the road who's even more highly rated in Chase Lofton at Millard South, you know, formerly of Elkhorn North, who was right there alongside Jones, maybe like 1A and 1B as far as the most important targets, not just for Nebraska in its own state, but the most important tor- targets are among the most important targets left on the entire board. But you got Ingerson and, and Carter Nelson in the last yeah, well, the last, last two year. classes. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah, it's it's a, there's a there's an embarrassment of riches when it comes down to the tight ends um, in Nebraska. I you know, I, it used to be what did it used to be? Linemen, running backs. I mean, there was certainly a heyday for running backs. Um, if you go back a couple generations, like into the '90s, and Nebraska seemed like Omaha at Omaha Central, it was producing great running backs every year, and 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 now that's the case uh, with these tight ends. So it you know it, it relieves pressure on Matt rule and his staff to have to go find tight ends from Georgia or Texas or California, because you can expect that there's going to be one or two of them every year in state who aren't just Nebraska caliber players, but are the kind of players who are going to attract Stanford and Georgia and Notre yep. Dame to come into your backyard. Yep. No doubt about it. Other schools are going to come in and, and try and recruit no matter what. Okay. Uh, so coming back here, we will, uh, we will get a little behind the scenes. Look, Mitch took a tour of Nebraska's 
uh, new football facility, or, or I guess some of Nebraska's new football facility right. that is we got in the, the first floor, floor, the main level, the, the first floor, which took you know still several hours. Uh, there was a uh, there was a cooking. Days. It took days. I got a lot of questions. Uh, we'll get to that coming Good. up here after the break. Uh, but first, please uh, subscribe and follow on uh, Locked On NEB on Twitter and Locked On NEB at gmail.com. There we go. Come back. All right. We're coming back. Hey, sorry about that. But a reminder for you guys that passion, drive, and patience is the formula for winning championships. And it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance superchargers, roof racks exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride. And that's every single time with your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP. Keep your ride or die alive ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers all right our apologies there for the uh for the sloppiness but uh technical we're... technical glitches if you're watching on youtube you saw things going in and out um <laughs> if you're listening on apple spotify dropping the uh the uh uh, little little identification there. Um, if you're if you're on audio, you probably didn't notice anything until we're talking about it now. So we're just making a mess of the show. Absolutely. Um, the College World. Speaking of a mess, the College World Series starts today. Um, it'll be mm. a mess because nobody knows who's going to win this thing. Uh, Tennessee is is the favorite, um, but it's a it's a pretty wide open field. So I'm excited to get down the ballpark here in like very short order right when i get done i'll be the, i'll be there too today i'll be there for at least the first game probably going to go check out friday night lights in lincoln tonight um see dayton riola slinging the ball around and, and whoever else is there um but uh the ferris wheel is the winner to begin to begin the college world series the ferris back. wheel has moved across 10th street it's actually back it was gone i think i thought the ferris wheel died in covid but um that didn't that it, it's uh it's there and it's like now right next to the ballpark so if you want and you don't have tickets to the game what you should do is go buy a ticket on the Ferris wheel and then find a way to get stuck at the top. And you can, you can peer into the ballpark and, and have the best, uh, the best view of the house. Yeah, not bad. Uh, it's a, it's a pretty good shot up there, but it's a, yeah, it's moved across the street from lot D to lot B uh, downtown, which is, you know, I just scintillating updating breaking news here, uh, but we'll talking they, about it on ESPN for sure. They, like the view of the be, ballpark. Yeah. we yeah. probably an inning plus. Uh, let, let's talk about the day that you had. Um, what was it? Wednesday? Wednesday. Uh, yeah. Wednesday morning, afternoon uh, over at Nebraska's new football facility, the Osborne Legacy Complex. Um, mm -hmm. And so you talked to some support staffers, Christian Coggin, the, uh, the nutrition specialist and Mitch Lewinsky, um, and Corey Campbell. So we're talking about weight training and we're talking about recovery and we're talking about nutrition. And so mm -hmm. at the end of all of that, uh, some of the media members got a little walk through a couple parts of Nebraska's new football facility and got a immersive process in cooking hibachi, which mm -hmm. I'm very excited about it. First of all, first things first, how was your hibachi? Fantastic. Um, so this is not like when you cook, if you try to cook on your stove at home. Let me first say that. They, they brought us into this room, and this is the room – that they use for recruits. So this weekend, today, it, it, as Nebraska brings in official visitors, they will have cooking demos for the recruits. They do this for the players during the season, and they want the players to learn to cook because we, that's that's part of their educational experience as a as a football player at Nebraska is to learn to cook for yourself. Obviously, nutrition um, has risen in importance uh, within Matt Rule's football program. He brought on Kristen Coggin. And if you want to know more about Kristen Coggin, you should go check out my story on The Athletic that I wrote a few weeks ago, which published in the New York Times, by the way, a parent company of, of The Athletic. So on May 20th, it was in the newsprint edition of The New York Times, which is pretty cool if you're a, awesome. if you're me or if you're a college 
um, football team's nutritionist. And there's a profile story of you with photos in the New York Times. So just wanted to throw that out there. I know Kristen's parents are excited about that story being in, in print. And um, I'm working to get a uh, get a copy of that uh, paper for them. But um, we got to go in and do the same thing that the recruits do. Stand there in front of the uh, burners. Um, the, 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 the pans were ready to go for us when we walked in. Six media members were allowed to actually put on the apron, put on the gloves. All the food was prepped. So I think in cooking, like, isn't the most difficult part, like prepping your food, yes. you know, you got to buy it, you got to buy the groceries. Buy it. Yeah. And then prep, it was all done for us. Like 90% of the work was done. We got to pick our protein. We got to pick our carbs. Did you want rice? Did you want noodles? Um, I went with rice and shrimp, um, teriyaki sauce. I went with some, some diced onions, a bunch of spices, um, some mushrooms, um, some other veggies and things that I didn't know how to identify and put it all together. And, and so Julian Franklin, he's the performance chef, like the head guy who cooks for the football team um, or, or whatever cooks. Yeah. He cooks for the players. Um, he led this thing and Kristen walked around and told us all we were doing a good job or yeah, she was very nice. Um, <laughs> some people were, some people were not doing a good job. Let's just say that I'm not going to name names, but um, I think I did all right, and and my teriyaki shrimp tasted very tasted very good. I just like the idea that we have um, we have you six up there, and there was a picture of you standing there with your plates of hibachi and your aprons mm -hmm. on. So now we have that picture forever. So if it gets you meme or something like that, just don't be surprised. I thought about blackmail possibilities as yeah. the photo was being taken. I'm like, what are we what are we doing here? What they were very. They were very forceful about the need to to have a photo after the event. I think that's that's because they wanted us to get the experience that they have with the recruits when the when the recruits come to campus. They, you know, they all make their 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 dish and then they they take a photo in front of the um, you know the big N logo where there's TVs. This is not the permanent room they're going to use for for cooking demos. They're they're going to have an entire demo kitchen upstairs on the second level when. The training table opens and, and a food service company will be hired to to run all of this. I mean, think about the purchasing alone that Nebraska will have to do, not just for a 145 player football team, but all of the the athletic department, the entire all of the student athletes will eat in the um, in the new training table space. So you're talking about feeding, you know, more than 20 athletes from more than 20 sports. Um, that, that's a lot of buying of food. Um, the football team. Uh, newsflash eats a lot of food. Some of the guys <laughs> eat upwards of, I believe she said 6,000 calories a day, eight meals um, a day. So they have to buy and, and you know, they, 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 they need to hire a company to come in and, and run that thing. Um, that's not in place yet. Like that's going before the regents here shortly to, to create that contract. It's like, it's like a, a fraction of, of the manpower at work now um, compared to what it will be in late July when the whole, the whole big thing, like a, it's like a five-star restaurant going in up on the second level of the, of the Osborne complex. And we got a, just a, a little preview of it on Wednesday. I love that Nebraska is steering into this. I mean, they, they, you know, the, the story that you did on Kristen a few weeks ago, um, opened people's eyes, I think a little bit to it and just the scope of, of what they do. But, it's it's very clear. I mean, it's part of the recruiting process. Like it's oh, yeah. it's part of their it's an integral part of their official visits. You come in and this is what you're going to get. It's not only I mean, we have all the requisite, like we have a beautiful stadium where we play in front of ninety thousand people. And, you know, obviously, you know, we're we're getting there to try and be competitive in football. Like we have all these things, beautiful campus, all this stuff, nice city. Um, but you're also gonna be taken care of like 100% of the time you're here. Nebraska steered into that idea. It's really, I mean, I, there's, there's teams are trying to find edges all over the place. And, and this is just where I think Nebraska has been able to carve out a little bit with their, with their new facility, first of all, and then um, their, their want and need to develop people, not just on the field, but also off it. It's, it's really, really cool to watch. Kristen Coggin, the, 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 director of performance nutrition. She's such a huge piece of what Matt rules doing at, at Nebraska and what, what he continues to want to do and like what his vision for Nebraska was. And, and she was at South Carolina 
um, and and formed a connection with Marcus Satterfield during during his time with the Gamecocks. And and when Rule brought Satterfield back to be with him at Nebraska, um, they had of course worked together at previous stops. Um, Satterfield said, "You want to go hire Kristen Coggin and do whatever it is that she wants." Um, and she wanted a staff of like five full time nutritionists. And he said, "Okay, um, I'll take this to Trev Alberts." And Trev Alberts said, "Yeah, let's do it." So, yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to uh, it's hard for me to exactly assess the significance the importance that a nutritionist can play in building a football team but it's it's significant um and there's something about the way that she has formed bonds and relationships with the players and their parents in this year and a half that um this this matt rule regime has been getting off the ground that i think is unique and separates her from what you might find um, at other Big Ten institutions or going around the country. You know, you can be great at your job in informing and understanding um, th the importance of nutrition in a daily um, regimen for 145 guys who range in shapes and sizes from, you know, 180 pounds to 350 pounds. But to then be able to convey all of that to them and to sell it to their parents um, when they come on visits and then continue to connect with those families during the time that they are in school, it, it, it takes a pretty unique, um, personality and, um, just personal makeup. So they've really found that with her. And I, I, I sense that if she wanted to go out and look around that there are a dozen or more NFL teams that would probably love to have someone like her on their staff. But fortunately for Nebraska, you know, she right now in her career at 34 years old, she values being around um, players, athletes who are in like this, this stage of their life where they're still learning about this stuff. You get yeah. to the NFL, those guys are very in tune with what their bodies need. They're still learning it when they come to college, like they, they're coming out of high school where they might eat Twix bars for, for nutritional right. values. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I don't, Matt rule didn't know he was getting this when, when uh, he came to Nebraska, he didn't know that, that, that he was going to be as set up as he was with the nutrition piece, but it has become um, essential, I think for Nebraska to be able to build into the kind of football program it wants to be. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, so coming back here, we'll have a little bit more on uh, on Mitch's tour and and exactly what Nebraska is highlighting inside that facility or the parts uh, that it, he got to see over the weekend. But first, if you are watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and you have to turn down the volume with all the shouting about Caitlin Clark, make the switch to Lockdown Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring the, you, you the biggest stories Without all the screaming, Locked On Sports Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24 7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. That's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, back for the final segment of the week uh, on the Locked On nebraska pod it is the middle of june man june 14th when we come back on on monday it's going to be uh the second half of june we were just cruising through this summer training camp's going to be here before we know it and when nebraska connor gets into training camp in august it will be the first time that they've done so in this new osborne legacy complex which as we have been discussing on this episode we in the media got to tour on Wednesday, not just the cooking demo, which again was done entirely for research purposes in order to inform our audience about the nutritional value of being a, a football player at a college like Nebraska. Not at all because it was free lunch for me and, and others um, who do my job. But um, we first went into the weight room with Corey Cam Campbell, the head strength coach, and Mitch Chelowinski the um, coordinator of sports science. And we saw all of the weight racks. Uh, we saw the incline turf hill, um, the turf hill that at the push of a button can go from a 15 degree angle down to uh, a lower angle. As 
as Campbell described it, he said, it's like, you can go out on the, on the turf outside or the grass outside, and you can put a sled around these guys and, and have them run, or they can just come in and run up a hill and get <laughs> uh, a, a similar kind of, of workout because we have this, this artificial hill right here in the weight room. So that's, that's cool. Um, simple yet, yet effective. Um, looked around the weight room. I, I asked Corey at one point, I said, Hey, what are those treadmills up there? Like it looked like they have this super high tech weight room with all of the, the strength racks and everything. And then up above, it's like, that just looks like, uh, you know, like 24 hour fitness or something. Why are there like six or seven treadmills and elliptical machines up there? Is that for a recovery area when players are, are, you know, just like riding the bike because they're coming back from an injury. And he said, no, you know, the, the recovery area, which is over there has got its own cardio equipment. So that's for the coaches. So like Matt rule and Tony white can come in and get their own workout and watch the players lifting weights while they do it. So like, yep, you guys actually have thought of everything in, in building this facility. Oh, I think that's a big takeaway for sure. Like when they, when, it wasn't that long ago, Mitch, when they were building these giant facilities on on college campuses for football teams or for athletic departments that the the big the big draw inside of them was what was going to be the cool thing. You know, it was there going to be a a giant water fountain? Was there going to be a recording yeah. studio? Was there going to be like a gamer <laughs> lounge or whatever it might be? And, you know, s- Nebraska will have some, you know, some really cool things, but it's all geared toward like the functionality of it, of what makes you a better football player and what makes you a better athlete. So a lot of space for recovery, a lot of space for mental prep. You know, the walkthrough room has been talked about a lot Um, and, and the smaller, you know, half size football fields where you can go out and you just one step and you're out the door and you're on a football field and everything's close. You, I mean, you take a tunnel straight out to the to the north, you know, east side of uh, northeast corner of Memorial Stadium. You're there. It's ten seconds. So that I, that I think, um, you know, it was even cool to see how you know the existing structure. If, if anybody's seen pictures or they've been in the in the Hawks Championship Center, um, where Nebraska, you know, that they still have their indoor full size football field there, and they'll they'll of course still use that. But that whole south wall is just, you know, blown out and it's and it's connected to the new football facility, which is connected mm-hmm. to the stadium. It's yeah. just it's yeah. so cool how that just fits so perfectly right in that spot. It really was all thought of. Um, and and I think the functionality of it was at the top of the top of the list. That's key word. Functionality, efficiency, um, all of that stuff. It's technology. I, I, I think the technology in there is remarkable. And Cholowinski is like a, I mean, his mind is is like the 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 meme with the Zach Galifianakis with all of the 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 characters, you know, floating above. That's that's kind of Mitch has got that vibe about him when when he walks around and and showed showed us the all of the all the bells and whistles not all of the bells and whistles but we saw a few of them and i mean there's there's like led boards all over the place so there's like messages that they can put out and change um i saw one on social media th- this this week as they got ready to have recruits in that had like the college football playoff 12 team bracket on it like come into hmm. our facility and and you know this is what we're thinking about for the future of of the program they've got these um normatech boots that they um, outfit the players in that, that help them recover from, from an ankle injury or a calf injury or something along those lines. There's the anti-gravity chairs, which I'm still, um, working on, on trying to figure out what Bryce Conover, the, the, the QB who was at the post-grad camp on Monday was talking about when he said that he heard there's a chair you can sit in that resets your nervous system and makes you feel like you lost 15 pounds. (laughs) <laughs> um, in a, in a 30 minute session, this might've been the anti-gravity chair that, uh, that, that, that is rumored to exist within that facility. Um, there's the sleep pods, the cold tub. It's not a tub. It's a pool. There's yeah. like this, this pool that they can, they can get it down to 42 degrees. So gone are the days of like the guys sitting in these ice baths outside under the end zone seats. Um, you used to see that after morning practices in August no, now they just go walk into the cold tub. They can actually walk in and they can they can remove their 
their practice gear and put it in like a place where like some robot comes and makes it go into the laundry and they can stand in front of, um, in front of like a shower that comes out of the wall that sprays them off. So like they don't get dirt in the tub. Like you don't, you don't even have to turn the handle. They just stand there and the, and the thing knows they're there and it sprays them off. Like, and it goes in the dirt, the dirt goes down like a magic, a magic <laughs> trash drain or something like that. So, and then next to the cold tub, there's a hot tub, which again, isn't a tub. It's a pool that you can like work out and do exercises in. And I will say there was one player, um, who was, who was, uh, you know, getting some, some, some hot tub time in or hot pool time in while the, the media toured through the facility. Have you, have you heard about this? Do you, do you know who was in there? No, I do not. I haven't heard the story yet. It was just Dylan Raiola. I mean, you know, Dylan was, <laughs> Dylan was, <laughs> So Dylan so was getting his, right? he's like, hi, you know, hi guys. Good to see you. I know he was too immersed in the experience. Like he had AirPods in and he was doing lunges in the, in the tub. Like it's, it's like 15, 20 feet long or 30 feet long. And he's, he was lunging through there and uh, yeah, okay. I mean, there's the, Perfect. there's the five-star quarterback. Like, could you make a, is this a commercial or is yeah. this actually a tour? Yeah. Is he a plant? Did they put him there? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't think so. It's too perfect. It's too perfect. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Um, that that's going to be such a, a big deal for Nebraska to, to get that thing open and have full use of it um, as they're in the process of doing right now. Okay, Mitch, let's uh, that's it for the week. We'll be back next yeah. week. Plenty, plenty to come. Um, but uh, send us away here as we get out of here. On survive, Friday. survive the college world series, your first weekend. I hope everything goes well in your interviews. You get to talk to lots of, uh, Famous people in the stands, man. I mean, if you can find like Livy Dunn won't be there this year, but I don't know what the version of of that is going to be. I, w- I wish you well, and mm. um, I will be there too, um, at least for the first few days, and then we'll see where uh, we'll see where next week takes me. So, want to yeah. let you know at the end of the week here that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports twenty four seven streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with all of the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app.